Hey, how's it going, Jarvis Underground and Jarvis Nation? Darby Rollins here, and I am accompanied by uh, Gina Tassinelli. Yeah, awesome. you got it. <laughs> uh, who is uh, who is going to be talking to us today about four powerful steps to sharing your story and energizing your audience? Gina um, recently published a book with a collection of eighteen authors who were sharing their journey of overcoming mediocrity and taking a hold of their life to become better. Um, and she's and she helps empower high achieving heart centered experts such as coaches and consultants to show them how um, the brand in their business um, and helping them level up their style, their image, their social media marketing presence. And we can tie all of that back to how your book, again, is that cornerstone for your brand and your marketing yeah. and your platform. So Gina, thank you so much for uh, for making it here. I know it's been a bit of a trip <laughs> making <laughs> no, it today. Thank you. Oh, thanks for having me. Tell me a little bit about um, the recent book that you have worked with because I've always been interested in what these like collection of authors and putting together a book and like how you're leveraging everyone's audience in that case for the book getting out. The publisher, she and I have uh, become great um, business connections. And for a couple years, she had introduced the book to me and had told me about it. And I just was like, I don't have a special story to share. I help other business experts, other entrepreneurs to figure out what their story is so that they can make that connection with their own business and their brand. But when it came to, to me, I just couldn't figure it out. And so um, I finally understood the purpose. We really dug into where my passion came from for what I do. And it really started from my childhood. And so, you know, you, you go back. It's, it's a very, um, it's a deep journey. There's a lot of self-awareness that you do when you're writing a story about yourself. And so it developed and I said, yes, and yeah. And then here we are today. So it, it launched last week, actually, I wasn't, I wasn't in it on my own. I had another 17 authors with me. And so we met every week throughout that whole time to share our stories, to help each other out in identifying, you know, what are the pieces of our story that are really going to impact someone else. That's really the whole point is you want to share your story in a way that's going to resonate with others. And it helps them get to see you not just as an expert, but also as a real human that also has their own challenges and struggles. And so they can resonate with that. So it was about five, four or five months. And then, um, you know, we did a lot of uh, collaborations together. I interviewed a few of the authors on Facebook and vice versa. I was on some podcasts with them. So that was, a, that was another really great experience with that is just being able to connect with women that were also in the book and had the same focus and purpose for, for their story and, and the book and as a whole. Well, it sounds like it was a really cool experience just to connect with yeah. a lot of other, you know, high performing, like-minded um, people in your space and, uh, and learn from other people as well. Uh, how yeah. did, I'm curious when you're going through those interview processes and sharing mm -hmm. your story, AI and books here, right? It's one small right. section of the platform. Um, I'm curious, how did you to take those stories away and did you write your own like, did you, did you put it into Jarvis and then kind of like go from there when it came to the actual writing portion of it? So or I will, I will say Jarvis was very helpful um, yeah. because personally, I'm not a great writer. I just am not, it's not my forte. Um, and so I have lots of thoughts in my head, but when I go to put them down on paper, it just doesn't come out the way that, you know, in a way that's going to be exciting <laughs> and, um, fun to keep people attentive to the story. So I did use Jarvis for, you know, for certain like uh, introduction paragraphs and um, to rewrite my thoughts. And so that was super helpful when it came to writing my story and then and having Jarvis kind of be in my back pocket too. Yeah, it's super helpful for getting yeah. the, the ball rolling, right? And oh, then, absolutely. And, and then it comes to the the real powerful stuff, which is the the sharing the story, the engagement uh, that you can create through your own personal experiences. Yeah. Um, and that's what kind of what we're going to be talking today. You've got four four steps that you, you kind of talk about and 
in, I guess, like the pillar of like your marketing. Mm -hmm. um, how I, I guess kind of like, do you, do you have any like specific um, steps that you kind of want to dive into right now? I don't know if you had anything to share the screen or if yeah. we just roll through it. We're just going to have a conversation. Um, okay, cool, cool. But yeah, so if you do want to take some notes, this would be the time for sure. Mm -hmm. So take out your pen, paper, or, or, or type it out. Um, so the first thing I wanted to mention is, you know, when we're going through the process, it can be a very awkward process. And, and in general, just putting yourself out there as a personal brand can be a very awkward process. And that's really what um, has led me to doing the work that I do today. So um, as a little bit of background, when I started in marketing, which has been uh, 13 years plus now um, that I've had my social media agency, what I realized for myself being on my own is that I was leading with my website, my services, my logo, and I wasn't putting myself in front of my business. So I quickly realized that the missing puzzle piece was myself, was how I was showing up. And so when you're thinking of writing your story, you want to write it in a way that is giving them a good insight of who you are as a human being, because that is what your your brand, when you are an entrepreneur, that is what your brand is about. Your brand is you. It's not the services or your logo or the colors or the fonts or any of that. It's actually you. So when you talk about a problem, you agitate it, you then give a solution, which by the way, is one of the frameworks inside of Jarvis. Number one thing that I did is I first thought about what's the problem that I want to solve. For me personally, going through my story and understanding how my story has led me to where I am today, the problem I wanted to solve was to communicate my story in a way of letting people know that when you show up as a personal brand and as a real human in your business, you can actually be really successful in your business as an entrepreneur. You don't have to give up. And then I gave insight into what sparked the start of me figuring this out for myself. So the insight was that I realized that I couldn't my agency. I wasn't getting new clients because they weren't getting to know who I was. And so that was, um, that was also part, part of my story is, is letting people know, you know, the, when I first started as an entrepreneur, this is, this is what happened. I was, I started my agency. I was pushing my website and services and not letting people in, not letting them get to know me. And then number three is how we're going to fix that problem. And so the way to fix it is to learn and understand that that's the missing piece in your business is to show up as a personal brand. It takes less time creating content for your business when you're marketing yourself on social media, when you are being more authentic and genuine about who you are and about your business and about the value that you bring to people rather than the features of what it is that you offer. You want to, you want to lead with your benefits. And then the last thing is what's your mission? So think about what your mission is. For me, my mission is to share these foundational steps to other entrepreneurs so that they can stop spinning their wheels in, you know, feeling like they have to be on social media 24 seven or feel icky about marketing themselves. When you lead with value, people will want to actually buy from you. They will want to throw those credit cards at you because they're getting to know you and they get to know what it is that you can help them with rather than what features of your product or your services are. So those are the four main steps. So number one was to which problem do you solve? Number two, which insight sparked the start of your business to be able to solve that problem? Number three, what are you doing now to fix the problem? And number four, what is your mission? and you tie your story into all of that. So you make it very personal. Those are really simple sounding steps that yeah. I should have heard <laughs> four years ago when I was starting out selling products on Amazon. And I was like, <laughs> buy, buy my product, buy my product. But it's hard. I mean, like, especially starting out as entrepreneurs, I mean, like from my experience anyways, 
so easy to focus on the features. Um, yeah. In your own experience, what sort of transformations have, have you seen? Maybe what like practices have you, you engaged in that have helped you with putting yourself out there and helping your clients um, put themselves out there to be more authentic? Yeah. Um, so one of the very first things that I did is I was a very private person in the beginning when I started my business and um, even my, you know, my public Facebook business, my business page was the logo and e the cover. Ha there were never images of me. You would never even know who owned the agency. I switched that and I put a picture of myself as a little profile pic. My Instagram, I turned it to public instead of private. And I realize that it's okay to be public. It, it just, it doesn't mean you have to dish everything out and you can be selective as to what it is that you put out there. So I started to notice a difference in the way people were interacting with me and reaching out to me and the connections that I was making virtually because I've been in the online space for so long, but I was still like hiding, like you said, hiding behind everything. And then having mentors really helps too. I coach other entrepreneurs on how to use social media and how to show up as a personal brand. But I have my own mentors, Molly, who introduced us and working with people that you see that are really putting themselves out there in a way that aligns with you and not trying to be like other people being yourself. I did a lot of journaling too, like just mm -hmm. journaling about my day. And then I would turn those little things that would happen throughout the day and share them as posts. And so that really started to help making some more authentic connections. Your vibe attracts your tribe mentality. Yeah. You're going to hang out with the people that you're going to want to hang out with and yeah. that, that bring out the best in you versus the worst in you. What are yeah. some of your personal goals with using this book? Having your own like why behind it and sharing your story out there. We've talked about like the impact it's going to make um, mm -hmm. specifically with growing your own business. I'm curious, mm -hmm. like, what are you planning on doing from a marketing perspective right. to leverage this book now that you put all the work in over the last five, six months? Right off the bat, uh, something that I've already started doing is I partnered up with a nonprofit. So there are proceeds from the book are going to go to, it's called the Blue Ribbon Movement for Nurses. Um, and that is just something that I wanted to do with how things are going on right now in the world. Um, and I thought that that would be a great way to get the book out there because I, you know, I didn't say yes to the story to honestly, to make money off the book. My intention was to share my story along with all of the other stories in the book. And then again, just to tell more about who I am, I get so, so often, especially within my own program, people say, Oh, but you've been doing this for so long, or, you know, uh, you have everything so perfect. And I just want people to know that you everybody starts from somewhere. And we didn't we weren't born like knowing how to do our business. We weren't born knowing how to market ourselves. We all go through challenges and struggles. And so I wanted to really give people a real insight as to the, you know, the grinds, like what it what it's really like. I'm a wife, I'm a mom, I have a few businesses, I'm constantly wearing a lot of hats, I barely made it here today. So I want people to know that you, what you see out in public is not always exactly how it is. So as entrepreneurs, you know, we all we follow these really high level experts and we think like their lives are perfect and they're really not we don't know what's going on behind the scenes we don't know what their struggles are how many you know how many investors are behind them helping them you know show up all over the place all of that so so yeah so my purpose really is to share just real life um what it's like to start a business and and what you can do with your business when you actually show up in your business as your brand and not hide. Is there any assumptions that people make about you specifically continue to come up again and again? Um, yes. You know, I'm, I'm a huge believer in planning and because I work so much with, you know, all the, the technical side of social media and content creation and all of that. Um, I have a program with amazing women in there, entrepreneurs, most of them are coaches. And, um, and I'm, I probably sound like a broken record to them when I'm telling when we're trying to batch content, just for example, and, you know, 
most people, even like myself, when I first started, if I was to put anything out on social media, it would be right at the moment, not putting much thought into it. So I try to teach a content creation process. And so, you know, I get very often things like, well, you have a team behind you that can help you with all this right away. And I just recently like started with a team and I've been in business for 13 years. So um, in up until then, up until literally about two years ago, I was doing everything that I do and that I teach. I was doing it all on my own. You can do all the things on your own. You don't have to have a huge team behind you. Um, once you grow and you know to a place where you can budget for that, then that's wonderful. So that's a misconception is that you know we all have it like all together um, because we have people that are supporting us. But yeah, and I I love the 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 like authenticness that's i mean over the last few years even i think you've seen like a transformation in like social media from going away from like the classic yeah. five year ago instagram everything has to be picture perfect there's still that, right. that aesthetic there but now, then you have a little bit more the raw real quick to get the content out type of thing right and even looking at like gary like gary vanderchuk for an example is like a lot of his content just looks like it was shot on an iphone but he does right. have that team behind it. And so everyone's like, well, if this is how Gary does it, then maybe it's how everyone's doing it. I mean, I'm sure you have your, your own systems and process around it. What's like a really simple way that someone can like approach batching content so they don't feel like they're rushed and in the moment to just get stuff out there and it's not really planned out accordingly and it ends up costing them more time. Yeah, so um, I love video. And so I really believe that if you you can take a 10 minute video, preferably live, because um, you can connect more with people, uh, take your video and repurpose that in different ways. Uh, you know, chop it up into 15 second little clips um, or or and transcribe it into a blog post. Um, and then from that blog post, you've got little tips and quotes that you can create for social media graphics for the rest of the week. So I really believe in like having one big piece of content and then using that piece of content in a whole bunch of different ways to create content throughout the week or the month. And it keeps your message cohesive. Yeah, that's a lot of what we're doing here with like even these lives, for example. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're going to, you know, bring this down, chop it up and, you know, start dripping it out over the next few weeks. One quick thing that I do tell people if they're ever like in a bind and just not sure what kind of content to post is just write down like 10 or 20 questions that you get asked all the time about your product or your service or objections. And then you answer those and that's content. So it's, you know, content should be meant to, uh, to answer your ideal clients questions that's going to get them closer to mm -hmm. knowing the value that you can provide and jarvis does that really i was, I was about amazingly. to say like, i was like <laughs> have you been using jarvis for this because i certainly oh my gosh. have yes i i use jarvis probably like 15 20 times a day i mean and he's open all the time have, have you customized any any recipes yourself on the platform so there is one that i use every week to put together in my own live video um, plan for the week. And it's a, it's actually one that was created by a good friend of mine. So um, it's a live, just an, an, a live outline. And so I take that outline and I'll create my email from it also for my Facebook live. And then I'll also create, you know, the posts that are going to go out throughout the week. Um, to promote the Facebook Live. So I take the pieces from there. Um, so that's the one that I've used so far because it it pretty much like types out an entire outline for me for my live. And then I just add some bits to it to make it a blog post. We got Greg um, tuning in here. It's Stephanie Lou did a great training on something like this um, a few months ago. Yeah, it's awesome. I need Definitely to check that out awesome. too. Yeah. Uh, Devin uh, had a comment as well. Um, so thank you for sharing, Gina. Um, oh, all of this is valuable. Awesome. Cool. Which one is your favorite recipe? Well, I've been working with Zachariah 
on developing uh -huh. this hero's journey recipe. A lot of the people that are using that recipe are coming back and saying that it's really getting the more like of a creative story element to mm. things, which is like, can Jarvis write fiction? Well, yeah, but it's not just going to write a novel for you on right. its own. It's going to, it's, you have to direct it a lot um, in that case. Um, what are a few like big, big tips that you've learned from, from Molly since you've been mentored by her that you've implemented and see like amazing results? She's a big fan of lives. So yeah. maybe that's one of them. <laughs> um, is any, anything else that you've taken away from Molly that has just been a really, really great game changer for you and helped you move along in your journey? Yeah. So um, a big one is when the C word happens, um, as an agency, most of our clients were brick and mortar. And so um, I was scared, like really scared, uh, you know, just some clients had to completely close, never reopened. And um, that definitely was going to affect my personal life as far as the income that I was bringing in. So Molly and I have been friends for some time. I've been in camera confidence for a little while prior to that. And she reached out and she had said to me, um, why don't you teach what you do? And I'm like, what do you mean? Why don't I teach what I do? And she said, you have time now. You're passionate about working with other entrepreneurs because I was doing some consulting as well. Um, the agency mainly does done for you services, but on the side, I did some consulting and she, you know, she said, teach what you do. You're passionate about it. You have, you know, you're an expert, you, you know what you're doing and other entrepreneurs can really benefit from learning what what you do teach them the same strategies that you use as, as an agency and that's what i did i started i you know i i put myself out there and i took on a few extra one-on-one -on -one clients and then when i was done with them they asked me you know is there anything else that we can do together uh, outside of one-on-one -on -one, um to continue learning and i was like i don't i don't have anything so then i created a program. And so now it's been a year that it's the Splash Marketing Collective has been around. I know how to do it for, for other businesses, but I don't know that I'm that great that I can teach it to somebody else for them to do it for their own business. And so um, she definitely gave me the confidence to just try and move forward and show up more. Um, and so that's when I really started to do more Facebook Lives too. Yeah. How do you feel that teaching this over the past year, how do you feel that has um, crossed over to your done for you services and, and the, the impact that you can create now looking back since you started teaching it? Yeah. So um, I, well, it allowed, what it did was it allowed me to also realize that I needed extra support and invest in a team. So I started with one VA and now I have a team of about there's six of us. I could be, I could work so much more efficiently and effectively if I wasn't doing it all on my own. And so that's when, you know, I decided, okay, I need to, I need to definitely hire on some people. It's just opened up my eyes to number one, not assume, you know, so but don't assume that everyone's the same way. And um, secondly, um, allow yourself to invest in some support. It's it really allows your business to expand because you have more time to serve others the way that you are passionate about. So you're working 50, 60, 70, 80 hours a week. Yeah, everything you're not as effective at the things that you really need to be effective about, which, you know, if you're a coach or you know, you're coaching people, then you need to be there to show up and you can't be yeah. showing up burnt out. No. And I was getting burnt out like big time. And that's, you know, and it's still, it's still a challenge to find that back. I think that's also something that many entrepreneurs deal with is finding that that balance between work and life and personal life, but then also learning to let go of control it's okay to shut down at seven o'clock at night. I mean, th and there are still times that I'll be, I'll come back to my laptop at like 11 o'clock at night. And I have to remind myself, 
it can wait till tomorrow. Like nobody's up right now, Gina, waiting for to get your email or waiting for you to create this piece of content for them. Journaling has really helped and I'm learning to meditate. Um, I am using an app. I've, I use Calm and Shine is another one. Okay. And yeah, that's so awesome. I mean, I think that the journaling is something that is in journaling and meditation is something across the board that, you know, you hear from the high performing side of things and yeah, and getting better at it. So practices that I know for sure that I need to be putting more of a focus on. And it's great that to reinforce from your experience that that has been such a powerful tool. How long do you journal for, you know, on a daily basis? I'm curious, you mentioned you could turn those journal pieces into social media posts and content. So in the morning, it's, you know, it's just like giving gratitude and thanks. And then also my intentions for the day. But mm. then I also keep um, a note tab in my on my phone so that when things are happening throughout the day, like, you know, I had a conversation with someone or something the kids that one of the kids did or something like that, I'll, I'll make a note of it. And I try to find a way to you know, relate it back to my business somehow to create some a post for it. Um, the other thing I was going to say, though, too, when we were talking about uh, what, you know, practices is I don't open my phone anymore first thing in the morning. I used to do that all the time and, and I won't do that. And I also uh, turn it off by like eight o'clock. It's off. So if you try to reach me, you can't. And that's that's something that I had a really hard time doing before. But I find that that's a lot, it, it's easier. You don't, you're not in that work mode when, you know, when you don't have it around and it's not buzzing. I'm inspired by like the simplicity of like the, the habits that need to continue to happen, like kind of across a daily basis and all comes back to mindset. Like you said, yeah. it all comes back to showing up your four points earlier, the, the, the steps to sharing your, your story and energizing your um, audience mm -hmm. is going to feed off of your energy. And they're going to respond to that. So the more that you can show up by doing the pre-work for this stuff and showing up to like point number one is like, what's the problem that you want to solve? Right. Um, the sharper you can show up on the front, the front end of that is the more impact you're going to be able to have. And the more people you're going to reach and the more successful, you know, your business and platform are going to go. So thank you so much for sharing, Dina. It's been a pleasure yeah. talking with you and having you mm -hmm. on, on with us. I know we're at the top of the hour. Um, respectful of your time. So um, any last, uh, um, you know, places that you'd like some people to send you, you've got your programs, your services, if someone wants to reach out to you to chat with you more about what you're up to, um, how they can work with you in some regard or just say hi. Um, yeah, where can they find you? Totally. So um, Facebook and Instagram at stylishly branding. Um, you'll find me there and just shoot me a DM or you know, a message to the page. Um, and I love to connect with new people. So yeah, I would love that. That would be awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Gina. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thanks for having me.